When I posted my full website build using Generate Blocks and Generate Press the other day, I got a lot of questions about the starter theme I had set up for this site. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up a starter site and child theme that'll work perfect with Generate Press and Generate Blocks. We're gonna start this by installing a vanilla version of WordPress and start from the very beginning. So if you follow along in this tutorial, you'll be able to set yourself up a starter site to build Generate Press and Generate Blocks sites right away. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're gonna do this build off of a completely vanilla, plain installation of WordPress, so we're all starting from the same place. So here, I'm just gonna install a new version of WordPress on my server, disable the caching, and go ahead and log in so we can get started. Now, once we get in, I like to get rid of all of these notifications that are shown here in the dashboard, so if you didn't know that was there, there's a cool tip. We'll also want to go ahead and switch the permalinks to post name. And I like to go ahead and set the time zone settings to my local time zone. So that's already in my starter site and I don't ever have to remember to do that again. And we can go ahead and delete out any of the trash that was installed in here by default. So any default pages or posts, I like to just get those out of my way and create those as I need them. I also like to rename the uncategorized category as general. So that way that the, the default category that's in there is at least something decent. Now we're going to install generate press the theme from the theme repo and delete all the WordPress themes out of here so we don't have to mess with those. And we'll start installing all the plugins we need. We can start by deleting the few that were in here and disabling the cache. And we'll start adding all of our free plugins from the repo first. So I'm going to install generate blocks. I'm going to install Fluent Forms, which is the form builder that I use. I'm going to install Code Snippets, which I use on about 99% of sites. I'm going to install Short Pixel, which helps optimize my images. I like having that in there right away, so all the images I upload will be optimized. And in this install, I'm gonna install Slim SEO, which is a very minimal SEO plugin, which I found to be really nice on some of these smaller sites. Also, don't forget to discourage search engines from being able to index the site. And next, we're gonna install some of the premium plugins, which I have downloaded on my computer. So we'll upload those and get all those activated. This includes Generate Press Premium, Generate Blocks Premium, the Fluent Forms Premium, and the Perf Matters plugin, which only comes in a premium version. And now that we got all the plugins set up, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to install a child theme. So I do have some custom CSS and PHP that I'm gonna paste into this child theme. I'll make all that available in the description below, but this just gets me started with the basics and having the child theme in place means if I need to make any major customizations down the road, the site is already built with a child theme, so everything's ready to go. So what we need to go do is download a blank child theme version of Generate Press. I'll include a link where you can download this file in the video description just below. We're gonna go ahead and download this to our hard drive and we're gonna open it up in VS Code, which is the code editor I prefer, so we can make a few changes to this child theme to make it our own. We'll go ahead and unzip it. And I have an image already prepared. You just need to name that image screenshot.png. We'll replace that file inside there. And we'll replace the name of the folder for this theme. I'm just gonna call it Ogle Starter Theme. So the first thing we'll open up is the styles. This is a style.css file and we can change in the theme name, the description of the theme, my name and my URL. We just want to make sure that we use we leave that template line that says generate press alone because this is a child theme of generate press. We can save that up and open up the functions.php file. That is just a blank vanilla version which we'll edit here in just a second. I'm going to paste in a bunch of CSS here as well as some PHP. I'll make all that available in the video description below except for some of the 
CSS for the Fluent Forms, which is something I will link to Mike Oliver's video. He did an entire video on customizing those Fluent Forms forms. Now the bit of PHP actually just gives you the functionality to be able to add categories to pages, which is something you'll see here in a second when I start doing some of my generate press elements. So now we just have to zip up that file so we can upload it as our new theme. We'll hit add new and upload that theme from our computer. Once the theme's upload, we can go ahead and activate it and double check all of our settings came through properly. Now I just wanna go ahead and do some basic customizations by turning on some of these modules inside of the Generate Press Premium options. And we'll go through here and change a few settings inside of Generate Blocks. I'm gonna disable the remote templates since I don't generally use those. And then I have a bunch of tweaks I make to Perf Matters. Now I'll link to a blog post down below. We did a two hour interview with the creator of Perf Matters where he walks through each one of these settings and what you should be using depending on your situation. It's a really great video if you're wanting to get started with Perf Matters. I'm just kind of doing the basics here that I know I'm probably gonna use on the majority of websites. And of course, once I'm actually developing a client's website, I'll go back through here and do some tweaking. But at least this way, some of the basics are already set up and out of the way for me. Now let's go ahead and add our first page in here. So I'm going to do this as our style guide page. And this is one thing that I got lots of questions about and asked if I could share it. Now it's really simple to set up, so I thought I'd just walk you through the process of setting this up. I'm going to go ahead and just create the basic blocks that I know are you're able to control from the customizer. So this is all my headings, uh, my body text, a link, the block quote, and we'll also do some generate blocks global styles in here, which we'll have to jump back and forth in. Now I do go ahead and include a fluent forms form in there so we can see what that looks like on the front end. And that's all being controlled by the CSS that's in my starter site template. Go ahead and add a grid here because we're gonna add some of the colors that are inside of the default palette inside of Generate Press. So what I do is just create a three column grid here and I'm gonna map each one of these colors to the colors that are inside the default palette. Now I have gone through and expanded my palette out quite a bit, but for the purposes of this demo, I thought I would just show with the palette that comes with inside Generate Press because it does a pretty good job. So I'm just making the background color of these columns link to the colors that are already in the palette and showing some names here so I can visually reference which color is which. So we'll go ahead and just give those uh, titles the right title there and add the last one, which is our accent color and map it to the accent color in our palette. Now that that's saved, we can hop on over here to generate blocks global styles and set up a few of our global styles. The first one I like to do is buttons. I usually have a primary button, which I'm labeling here, and then a secondary button, which you'll see me do in a second. So you can go through here and just set all those default styles. In the starter site, I'm really not worried about styling these so much as I am just having these different styles available and already set up so I can map them out properly to the design of whatever site I'm using the starter site on. We'll go ahead and add these here to our style guide page. We'll add the primary button as well as the secondary button. Um, I thought I had maybe misnamed these going back and rewatching it, but they seem to be okay. So we just need to map those to the global styles inside of generate blocks. We'll add that primary button and the secondary button and override some of these settings just to give these a little bit of space in between each other. So it looks okay when we're viewing the style guide page. We'll label these primary button and secondary button so we know what they are without having to go in and click on them. Now we'll also add another um, global style here that I use a lot are these pre-headings and some pill-shaped headings. So it's generally, you've seen them tons of times, all uppercase letters with some spacing in between the letters as well as an all uppercase style with a pill-shaped background, which is what you're gonna see me make here. And to do this, we just go into the spacing and turn it to inline width and give it a background color. Now it is going kind of funky inside the editor here, but that's absolutely fine. It's gonna turn out just fine on the front end. So now that I've saved those, I'm gonna go ahead and add those to my style guide as well. 
So when I'm going through later on an actual client site and styling these things out, I can see everything together in context. Double checking and everything looks to be good to go with my style guide page. I did realize that these colors didn't match perfectly and it was because they didn't automatically map to the right colors inside my color palette. So I'm just going back through here and making sure these colors are mapped to the custom variables for those colors. Now that everything looks good, I thought I'd just hop in the customizer here and show you kind of what I do to make changes to this. What's nice about having everything in the style guide is you can make those changes in the customizer and see them in real time. The next thing we're going to do is start setting up some of the generate press elements. Elements can be a little confusing and overwhelming, but that's because they're extremely powerful. Now in this demo, I'm going to only set up a handful of elements that I know I will use on just about every single website. Now when I go to actually build out these websites when they have a client project ready to go, I do end up adding a lot more elements to it. It's not uncommon for me to have 10 or 15 elements inside the site. But I go ahead and start this child theme and starter site off with just a few of the basics that I'm going to use 99% of the time. Now I went ahead and sped up almost everything in this video so far, but I'm going to go ahead and leave these elements at real time speed because they can be a little bit confusing. This first one I'm doing is a full width layout where I'm going to change the content width to full width. I'm going to disable the content title and featured image. Here's where you'll see me change to full width. And I'm going to select this for the front page, all of my normal pages. So this would be under page and then all pages. And then I'm going to add an exclusion rule, which is going to be for pages with the category standard page, which is a category I added off screen, but that's for pages that I don't want to go full width. Anything that I'm going to build with generate blocks, I'm typically going to do full width. Now this next one is a hook element, and I just set this up in place because I know I'm going to need some kind of head code uh, for analytics or something like that in the future. So this is just a hook to be able to hook into the head of the website and add some code. Now this next one I'm going to do is a block element and this is going to be a block for my page heroes. So most of the websites I do have some kind of page hero where it has the title of the page. So I like to just set up a really generic one here and we'll change that element type to page hero. We can leave the rest of that alone and then we just want to target it. So we're going to want to target this to page all pages. And then we're going to also exclude this from the pages with the tag standard page as well as the front page because usually on the home page I do some kind of different hero. And this setup will usually work for me about nine times out of ten. And of course this isn't styled uh, very pretty, but this gives me the basic idea of what's going to go in this section and gives me a head start whenever I start a client project. So I'll just add a background color and go ahead and tie in an H1 that uses dynamic data to pull in the page title. So we'll go ahead and save this one after we double check the responsive settings. Another block element I like to do is for my footer. So I'm going to go ahead and add another block element and create just a simple placeholder for my footer. So we'll select site footer here and we'll target this to the entire site as well as give it a title. And then we'll just put in a placeholder container and some text just so we know what goes here. I'm not worried about designing this inside my starter site since the footer is going to look different on every site. But this will just have the systems for the footer already in place and some generic content to remind me that it's there. Now the last thing I'm going to add inside the elements is completely optional. It's just something that I really like and that's containing my entire width of my website. So what I'm going to do here is add two hook elements. 
one that opens a div at the very beginning of my website, and then another that closes it. And all this does is put the HTML element in there for the div as well as give it a class. And then inside the starter site CSS that I already pasted into my child theme, I'm just targeting that class site hyphen wrapper and giving it a max width. In my case, it's generally 1920 pixels wide. So that way the website never expands beyond that 1920 pixels. And I like this because if you use background images in full width sections and somebody's on a widescreen monitor, sometimes that can really distort the way the website's supposed to look. So I'll show you here in just a second, we'll jump to the front end of the website and zoom out just to kind of simulate what that might look like on a really wide site. And you'll see with this open and close hook inside here, we're gonna contain the website to 1920 pixels. So if I zoom out here, you'll see that page hero stops at 1920, and that's just a preference of mine. So before we wrap this up, I'll just go ahead and add a couple pages here. So we know we'll have a home page, so I can go ahead and just create the home page and save it. And then we'll set that as the front page in the WordPress reading settings. And to give you an idea of what that standard page category was for, we'll go ahead and create a page here like a privacy policy page. I use this a lot for utility type pages that I know I'm not gonna spend a lot of time designing out. So what I can do is just create this page and give it the category of standard page. And that excludes it from the full width element that is going to make the page full width and give it the page hero. So I can have a really generic page that I can control with the theme settings. Hopefully that gives you enough information and inspires you to go out and create your own starter site that you can use with Generate Press and Generate Blocks. Of course, your starter site might end up looking a whole lot different than mine, and that's okay. You need to be able to set up things that makes it really easy for you to get sites up and running in a hurry. If you learned something in this video, I would really appreciate it to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you soon in another Generate Press, Generate Blocks, or WordPress video.